I just want to take you down south. The big band of the boys, Malesu, as uh, public health. About 20 minutes from starting that expanded community testing in the Hemelani apartments in Malesu. 8.38. Let's get uh, Christine from the Guam Chamber of Commerce onto the line here. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. So I guess just uh, first of all, what can you tell us about what uh, businesses will be allowed to uh, reopen, um, you know, of course, with social distancing and the mask and all that stuff on uh, Monday, May 11th, when we anticipate to go into uh, PCOR 2? So um, the listing that was released by the governor's office, which includes like retail establishments, shopping malls, um, shopping centers, hair salons, uh, barbers, um, professional services, so like real estate, um, you know, any any uh, office that, that basically, whether it's dog grooming or, you know, whatever types of services they provide, uh, those are part of the listing that's anticipated to be able to open May 11th. Do you foresee any changes to that list? Um, I hope not. <laughs> okay. You. Um, I mean, Christine, a, Monday is just right around the corner. So, I mean, are we set in, and is it kind of set in stone or is it rapidly evolving? Well, um, you know, initially, if, if you look at the, the listing on both sides, one, one was will open and the other one's uh, under review. Mm -hmm. uh, naturally, um, the chambers and the business sector community um, had hoped that uh, every every industry on the list would be able to open, but um, you know, as we went through, um, we were advised that the other ones they were still not comfortable with, and so those got taken off the list. Uh, we had really hoped that dine-in restaurants uh, would be part of the initial list for May 11th, but um, you know that was taken off. So uh, I guess it, it is an evolving list. We're, we're hoping um, you know that the the ones that are listed currently, there's no further changes okay. uh, or refinements. But, okay. uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's been the governor's call. And um, so, you know, we hope not, but we're optimistic that it, it, it's not going to change. Can, can we go through that, uh, the ones that were under review? And if you could just tell me if they're, they're in or out restaurants, sit down. So those um, were a concern and were taken out, um, okay. and that includes food courts that open up with like the shopping malls or the shopping centers. Okay. Um, uh, I guess you know the concern being that um, you know for both customers and staff, um, it you know with the the distancing, um, you know it, it still there. I guess the the medical side is still not comfortable um, okay. with with that opening up. Mm -hmm. So. That was one taken off of the list, but we have, so, so what we've been doing on the business sector um, is, you know, getting more feedback from like the restaurant owners or looking at the National Association of um, uh, Restaurants guidelines that they're using uh, for mainland restaurants that are opening. And we're refining, um, you know, the guidelines so that it's something that um, the medical group is, is more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And so... That's why we put it under review because even for like bowling alleys for um, uh, what were some of the uh, gyms, is that going to be open uh, PCOR, during PCOR or no? But that is one of the ones we're also um, submitting guidelines for. Um, we're also because um, some of the fitness center uh, owners or managers have been submitting in um, guidelines uh, for us to kind of present and, and advocate for. Um, you know, perhaps, you know, the, the concern is with the gyms, the, you know, the touching of all the equipment and then everybody's kind of in that space. Uh, but some of the, the fitness center owners have come back and said, you know, we can do classes outside yeah. or it's one on one personal training. Right. And so I mean, how are you going to open up dog grooming, but not a gym? Uh, well, with dog grooming, I, I suppose uh, the customer drops off their dog. Right, right, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> right. No, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I bet all the dog owners are like, shut up, Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just start with the ones that, that are g green lighted to open. All essential businesses uh, operating PCOR 1, retail stores, real estate and automotive sales, beauty, hair, nail salons, and barbershops, 
shopping center, malls, elective medical and dental procedures, treatments, and therapies. Those are all good to go for PCOR 2, right? Correct. Okay. And so the ones that are still under review, uh, the restaurants, gyms, spas, bars, clubs, outdoor sports activities, golf courses, tennis courts, swimming pools, baseball fields, group tourist events, bingo halls. Are any of those on the still under review actually going to be open during PCOR 2? I don't know by May 11th, okay. but um, mm. we're, we're optimistic, you know, we're, we're trying to push for during that week um, as we submit these guidelines, uh, we've gotten a number of submissions from um, the golf operators mm-hmm. and then we've also gotten um, some from like the tennis um, yeah. association and so uh, all of the folks um, have been working through the chambers to submit um, guidelines that we're using to, again, go um, to the medical advisory group and say, you know, these are the safeguards that they're putting into place so that we could prevent, you know, the spread and maintain uh, the safety of of, uh, customers and employees that work in these industries. Um, You know, is there any concerns? And if there's not, can you you add this to the list? And so, you know, we, we, we kind of refer to that list as the 2.5. It's kind of like May 11th, you know, let's get this uh, up and running and then uh, continue to work through all the different industries. And, you know, I, I've, I've put out to everyone that, you know, the businesses out there, they're, they're wanting to open safely. You know, none of these businesses mm-hmm. want to compromise the safety of their customers or their employees. And right. so they'll do whatever it takes to make sure that safety is preserved. Um, and so, you know, we're, it, it's a balance, you know, and, and, and again, a lot of the, the standards that we're submitting, a lot of the guidelines that we're submitting is coming from national associations and things that have already been implemented or approved at the national level. Um, and so, you know, we're confident that these have been vetted and that they, they're, they're taking safety, um, uh, safety uh, measures as a priority. And, and implemented so that it protects that safety. Christine, uh, 79% of golf courses in the American USA are now open. Right. Can you take that to your meeting this afternoon? Just for one of my friends who's an avid um, golfer. Oh, oh, we agree. I mean, trust me, we are, um, even like restaurants, dine-in, um, you know, Applebee's is open in the U.S., IHOP, um, mm-hmm. you know, the dine-in restaurants in the U.S. are all open. So, right. you know, it's not a lack of uh, trying on that end, um, right. you know, and, and certainly we appreciate um, that the medical group is being very, very cautious and, right. and doesn't want to see a resurgence um, or, or a, a, a pandemic, you know, through Guam. And so, you know, um, we are working with them and we're submitting all of these guidelines and, and saying just that, you know, I mean, it's, it's something that's been um, already in the U S open here are the guy. That's why these guidelines are available to us is because they've already been um, right, developed right. and submitted, yeah. you know, nationwide. Hey, are you, you're doing a, a, like a panel thing, um, a virtual town hall with uh, Dr. Ricky Hernandez of the Guam recovery panel of advisors. Um, I see also Holly Rustic uh, from the Guam Women's Chamber, mm-hmm. uh, and this is guidelines for reopening your business. This is this is today, right? Is this something that the uh, chamber has put on uh, for the membership, Christine? Yes. Uh, so it's a combined uh, effort with the uh, Guam Women's Chamber and the Guam Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, of course, our uh, president and the executive director on the Guam Women's um, Chamber has been getting a lot of calls from members asking for, you know, clarification and mm-hmm. so forth. And so uh, we actually asked um, Ricky if he would, um, you know, p- uh, present during this webinar, kind of give the overview. And then we wanted to give our members an opportunity to ask questions and to clarify guidelines or, you know, any any um, matters that, that they want to be able to either ask of Ricky or of the chamber, um, you know, we wanted to give them that opportunity. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna try and get uh, Ricky on tomorrow here on uh, yeah. B. So, uh, Christine, it, it kind of seems like we're still flying by the seat of our pants here. I mean, the anticipated reopening of Guam is on Monday, and is that an accurate assessment that we? But I know that businesses are trying to do that conversation. We're like, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we do that? But it kind of seems like we're still a little unclear on what's going to be um, allowed to reopen on Monday. Um, I don't. I mean, at, at least. Um 
you know, in, mm. in my conversations with people, it, you know, they're 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 gearing up to open. It's right. more like, uh, you know, again, in, in talking to the Micronesian Mall uh, general manager, he's just like, you know, they get the whole retail thing. Um, more of their questions is like, well, you know, what if like on the food court and, um, you know, what if we put the benches six six feet apart in in sort of the walkway? Uh, it's more like a refinement question, it's right. not a question of whether they're opening or not, but mm. just, you know, wanting to clarify because again, you know, these these operators, business owners or, or managers just want to be sure that they're doing everything that they can um, to open safely. And so, yeah. you know, I, those are the questions we're getting. I don't, I don't hear any business owners saying, flick it, everyone open, let's go, come on everybody, masks off, let's go. You're right, they are trying to proceed cautiously and I know, especially with the gyms, that the gyms are saying, hey, what do we got to do? I mean, people got to stay healthy. People mm-hmm. got to exercise. How can we make this work? And I, I don't know. I mean, I've never been like a super pro business, let the business do whatever they want kind of guy. But I just feel like we need to have a little more faith in our business owners that, you know, they're going to keep our safety and health in mind. And uh, they want, I mean, people want to work out. I'm pretty sure it's not that hard to figure out how to social distance. And anyway, sorry, rant over. <laughs> yeah, no, and we even for the gyms, we we submitted those guidelines in as well. And you know, a, a, again, to to you know, sort of my uh, position, every time I I go in and and ask for these things is is exactly what you're saying. Businesses want to be responsible. They want to protect their customers. They want to protect their employees. They're the ones coming up with these guidelines. It's not the chamber uh, or either chamber or ghra or anybody sitting down saying hmm what should we put in i mean um they're seeking these guidelines from from their national associations and yeah. you know they're the ones submitting it to us um to submit to the the medical group and 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 i i absolutely believe that every business owner and manager is going to do everything they can to be safe right. you know uh, wh- to wh- where, where's the the where can we find uh, more about the moving into pcor one to pcor two the guidelines and all of this information is it somewhere posted on gita's website or when the Hinemlo? yes yes it's in there so there's that uh the four triggers um right is you know th- that kind of explains how how uh it moves from one to another and right. so um, that's why there was some confusion over the 9th or the 11th. Uh, we initially thought it was the 9th based on... Uh, why would you think that? Oh, maybe because that's what the governor said. Yeah, it was the so ninth, that was right? the yeah. date, and that changed. And so, um, you know, I guess they... I mean, I, I don't know, um, you know, how they changed the date or what, what was the difference of, of the start date, but... You know, again, that was something that uh, we, we kind of found out uh, from the press conference as well. And so, <laughs> aren't you on? The <laughs> aren't you on the recovery panel of advisors, though? Yeah, we met. We met the time before when we had the ninth day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So that's kind of you know. <laughs> I'm just thinking, Christine, that the yeah, governor wanted you. to do Monday. They're like, oh, why are we going to open on a Saturday? Let's open on a Monday. That's what I think it was. I mean, I don't know, but uh, just another example of how you. <laughs> People are just the last to know. I mean, you're on this recovery panel, and you're thinking May 9th. The whole island was thinking May 9th because, again, the governor said repeatedly May 9th. And then let's say curveball. Nope, not May 9th, May 11th. And the way they say it is like, what? What's May 11th? Did we ever say May 9th? Do you have a recording of that? Can you prove it? (laughs) Well, you know, and we haven't met since that last meeting, so I'm not quite sure, um, you know, I, I... I uh, would imagine that it was it had something to do with that start date because mm. that that was the real critical thing was the start date of when that 14 day rolling average was. Um, but you know, hopefully we'll we'll get a meeting soon because you know we really do want to um, you know talk talk with them about that uh, 2.5 if you will and see if we could uh, get some some approvals going on those industries. Right. Um, Christine. You know, it's, Sorry, we got a question about the hair salons and all that. Uh, Someone, how do you cut hair from six feet away? I'm assuming that, is everyone just going to be masked up like the customer? Because the purpose of the mask, I mean, obviously we're all supposed to wear them still, even in peak or two. But it's if you get within six feet of each other, you're not, you know, spitting droplets all over somebody's face. So um, for the salons, is it going to be like you're sitting in the salon chair, you're wearing your mask, your barber's wearing the mask? 
Yes, yes, and that's that's why we were talking about these industry guidelines, uh, which is going to be released today. So there's an overall general uh, business guidelines, which is you know try to preserve the six feet, um, you know wear the mask and so forth. So for salons, uh, again, this is coming from um, their national cosmetology, whatever you call those, the their association. Mm -hmm. um, they they will have closer. The the customer will be sitting in the chair and the uh, person cutting hair or doing nails or whatever, both would be wearing masks. You know, of course, the washing hands, but the one of the unique things with their industry is it's by appointment only. Right. No uh, customers waiting in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. So if their, um, um, I guess, uh, their professional is not available because uh, they're still doing their customer, then um, they would wait outside in their car and they would call them in when they're uh -huh. ready. And so, you know, there's there's specific industry guidelines that that um, you know try as much as possible to preserve that safety. But you know, obviously, you know, even with dentists or with some of the um, you know medical type uh, regular routine stuff, you know, the the doctors may have to touch you know the the person or they may have to talk to each other in closer contact right. and they're going to have to wear that mask and wash. Their It'd be a good time to be Edward Scissorhands. So, so the the guidance isn't online yet. Not, not yet. Okay, because um, I was I've been on Gita's website and I She's couldn't find it anywhere. She's over here like arm typing. Uh, what was that? No, I, I've been on Gita's website trying to figure out where the guidance was at, and I, I just didn't see it anywhere. So. Yes, yeah, so so that um um uh, is being released today. Uh, Ricky, um, unless it was already submitted last night, was uh, supposed to forward that to Public Health so that um they may as well. Uh, put it on their website, mm -hmm. um, and then that's uh, one of the topics that we'll be discussing during our webinar this afternoon or no, this morning, ten thirty. Christina, when we talk about the the malls, you know, GPO, the mall, Gandhi Shopping Center reopening, um, you had mentioned that customers will not be allowed to loiter at the hair salons, and it's going to be by appointment only. Uh, what about the mall? Someone had put a comment here, like, "Hey, we go to the shopping center, the mall, GPO, whatever." Uh, trying on clothes. How do they sanitize those clothes afterwards? Are we, or what are the guidelines? Are we only letting in a certain amount of customers? Um, and then I know that when we talked to you, I talked to you maybe a couple weeks ago, you had said that uh, loitering would be discouraged and, and they were supposed to kind of beeline their way in there, get what they got to get, and go home. Has that changed at all? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to remember because even Macy's um, submitted their guidelines um, that came from, from their corporate office. And, and I don't recall on the trying on clothes, but I know for sure some of the things like makeup and perfume, um, they're, they're not going to allow uh. Uh, touching of those items or like, you know, trying on earrings and so forth. Uh, I have to clarify with the clothes, but, you know, uh, again, like mm -hmm. upon entering, they're going to have their mask. They're going to need to keep the mask on. They're going to have to wash their hands. Um, so I don't know about trying on clothes, but I know the, the washing of the hands and the wearing the mask is to prevent, you know, any of uh, droplets from whomever to right, get on right. the items that are being sold. Mm -hmm. and then this this uh, webinar, is this open to everybody or just businesses or just uh, the women's chamber? Uh? No, no, it's it's open to to anyone. Um, you know, it's it's free of charge. So uh, we sent out the notice to the Guam Chamber and uh, the Women's Chamber sent out notice to their members. But we have a lot of uh, businesses or uh, that have called us, and um, I, uh, Catherine on the Guam Chamber and Eileen on the Women's Chamber will send them the link so that they can join, whether they're members or not. So Chris, um, you you can join as well if you like. Okay, nice. yeah, um, it just would have been nice to know that it was actually happening, but great. We are, uh, you know, uh, gradually reopening. Uh, people, are, uh, people are anticipating going back to work as we have uh, some businesses that are going to go through some type of uh, reopening. The question is, what about daycare? So people are going to go to work. Are they going to be able to drop their kids off? And right. I mean, how do you go to work? Uh, daycares are not on the list for PCOR 2, right? Uh, no, daycares are considered in the same classification as schools, um, and even with the malls and the um, shopping centers, like uh, the guidance says that the playgrounds uh, or the play centers for the children uh, cannot be reopened because I think more so than adults, there's there's great concern with the kids. You know, it's hard for them to keep on a mask or 
keep their hands keep clean. Keep touching everything and then putting their hands Yeah, on. and so um, I oh. think there is even greater concern with, with opening daycares or schools, um, and, and I'm not sure how they're going to rectify that, but uh, mm-hmm. I believe that's why they provided with the, the funding for uh, under DOL to make sure that those who could not return to work because they had no um, daycare or school right. uh, for the kids to attend, that they would still be taken care of financially. So that's one of the issues that, that uh, employers are, are going to have to contend with um, and have to make accommodations for. Christine, um, what about the cost, uh, the burden of adhering to these rules about disinfecting? Um, is that is that a, a pretty heavy cost for businesses um, when they consider reopening in some way on Monday? I, I think so. I mean, there's the sanitation, there's uh, the PPPs. Um, you know, of course, businesses are sitting there. Do I ask my employees to bring it in or, you know, do I have to pay for all of this? Um, every business has to kind of evaluate. And, you know, yesterday um, had a discussion with, with uh, some of our board members and you know, some of the restaurant folks are like, you know, at 25% occupancy, it's not worth it, you know? Right, it's, right, yeah. Uh, that know, was my next question, Christine, is are there some businesses who, I mean, they've had their doors closed for, you know, over a month. Are there some businesses who just can't reopen on Monday, even though they're in that bracket uh, where they could be just, just because they can't afford it, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, and there's businesses like fruit. Agania that will not reopen uh, because you can't just weather the storm. I mean, I think a lot of businesses were hurting to begin with, um, especially in the restaurant industry where margins are low and cost of goods are high. Then, you know, we got hit with higher taxes. We got hit um, with minimum wage increases. And, you know, I, I know there's sensitivity about that, but you know, when you're operating a business, there's only so much income that comes in and you've got to pay all the bills plus um, for the the items. And so it just, you know, if, if you were struggling or you were you know, barely making it to begin with and then you go through this kind of experience, you know, you just kind of make the decision that it's, it's just not worth it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, you can't. And it's sad um, because I think for, for many years, me personally, it was like I felt like I was just keeping my business open to take care of my employees because I had kids that were in, you know, college or mm-hmm. whatnot and were flexible and, you know, it gave them an, an opportunity to get some hours and get paid. But, you know, I mean, it's really difficult. And, and I know of many businesses that will not be reopening. There's many businesses that um, will struggle to open and they're, and they're just going to wait to, to, to a vaccine found or whatever if they can hold on that long because it's, it's not worth opening and there's others that are anxious to open and, and looking forward to, to jump starting you know, the economy so it, it's, a, it's a decision that every business has to sit down and make for themselves. Is, is the chamber tracking and keeping account of how many businesses ha- have closed as a result of COVID? Well, we sent out um, a survey, um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's really not representative of, you know, the entire industry. You've, you've got uh, businesses involved in different um, organizations, so they might not be a Guam Chamber member. They might be in the Women's Chamber, or they might be part of GHRA or Guam Contractors Association. And so, um, I, I, you know, I was, that was one of the things I was hoping DOL uh, would track is is just like the overall, but I think it'll be pretty clear as we do our next unemployment survey. Um, you know what what the true impact has been to to our people and to businesses because obviously all those businesses that close. You know, I look at it in terms of all the employees that work there that lost their jobs mm-hmm. and and where are they going to go in this down economy, right? I mean. It's, it's going to be really tough for people. Mm-hmm. And, and and real quickly, do you have any updates um, on the PPP? You know, how many um, businesses have uh, qualified? Because I know that we had the, was it 108 million? Right, there's over 500 remember. businesses yeah. that uh, got those uh, PPP loans. And then before it ran out. Yeah. And then you now know, it's... I just saw... Um, an update on that, I believe it was like a thousand, and of course my my little thing here is not responding, but uh, somebody just sent me an update, so uh, 
We, we can we can check that. Approved one thousand twenty nine total funding. It looks like eighty three million or eighty three thousand. Sorry, I don't have my glasses, and I'm trying to look at this thing. But uh, Guam, they said a thousand twenty nine um, applications approved. Mm -hmm. And then round one was the five hundred and eight. Right. Okay. So the thousand is just for round two, um, and the we combine that with round one of the five hundred and eight, and then they said CNMI is two hundred forty three for round two, and round one was fifty six. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Christine, for your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day, guys. You too. Be Wash safe. your hands. Oh, I do every time, every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you got a, some issues. <laughs> I do. Okay. Be safe. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. Christina Belletto. Uh, 904.